So a little while ago when I was making the Roblox Fortnite games video, if you didn't watch that video, basically I learned that Roblox isn't very easy to capture in OBS using game capture. And I was worried I wouldn't be able to actually release that video because basically Roblox's anti-cheat prevents game capture from being injected into Roblox, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I then found a fix for this by enabling what's called the Vulkan Renderer, which for some reason works, except using a window capture in OBS as well. That is probably the more practical method, but if you're just a diehard game capture fan, this is the video for you. Especially if you use Blockstrap. Originally this video was just going to be following the forum post, but since I actually don't use that method by creating that JSON file, I'll link the post down in the description, but basically that post involves creating a JSON file in your Roblox directory. Since I don't actually do that, and I use fast flags instead to achieve the exact same thing in Blockstrap, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually do that, pretty much. I actually edited another version of this video you're about to see, and it'll go up either on my second channel or on this channel as an unlisted video. Either way, I will link it down in the description. But just be warned, um, after recording that, I really didn't feel like I was qualified to actually talk about JSON file method for reasons I just described. So this is kind of a take two, but anyways, let's get right into it, shall we? Alright, so I've got the actual code right inside a TXT file here, and what we're going to do is we're basically going to take parts of this and put it into certain fields in the Fast Flags tab within Blockstrap. So just let me pull up the menu real quick. So what you're going to want to do is you just want to go under Configure Settings, scroll down here to Engine Settings, and then right down here at the beginning, or the end, sorry, <laughs> I don't know what the heck I was saying, you have the Fast Flag Editor right here. I've already got it all set up, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and delete all of these, pretty much. Well, maybe not all of them. I do need a couple of these. But we're going to get rid of the three that are in here. So we're just going to get rid of the bottom three. Now we're just going to re-implement them just for the sake of this tutorial. So what you're going to want to do, you just want to go to Add New. And then the name is pretty much going to be this string right here in quotation. So if we just highlight this, copy, paste that right on in there, there's our name. Now, our value is going to be this right here, true, in quotations, pretty much. So you just go put that in there as true, and boom, it's right there. Now we just got to do the other two. Same concept applies here. As you can see, each flag is divided by a comma right up here, and the whole string of text is within these curly brackets right here. So since this one involves a number instead of a boolean, like true, we're just going to do the same thing for the actual property name, pretty much. So we're just going to copy that, add new, paste that right on in there. And then under value, we're just going to put one. That's basically how you add it in. We're just going to do the last one right here. Given the fact that only one of these actually mentions the Vulcan renderer, in theory, I don't see why you couldn't just use this one right here and then just ignore these other two. Except maybe this one, because this might conflict with the Vulcan, pretty much. So this one is going to disable the direct 3d11 renderer, which is the default renderer, pretty much. And then when you have this one enabled, it will move it over to Vulkan, pretty much. That's how I think it works, really. I haven't done any actual engineering here, so just throwing that out there. Once you've got all three of those in, you can click save, and it's in. And that should work, in theory. And if it doesn't work for whatever reason, I wouldn't really be surprised. This is a method. I did say this in the original version of this video, just a method. If this doesn't work, just use the window capture method. It's very practical, really. It's what basically everybody uses, and I just thought I'd post this out here, just in case we had any diehard game capture fans, as I said previously. Also, in case it needs to be said, you do not need to put it all into a TXT file right here, like I did. You can easily just copy and paste it from the forum post. I just did this just for practicality for recording this, basically. Just wanted to make things easy on myself. But this is in no way required. Anyways, that's all I've really got for you for the tutorial section of this video. There is technically a third way you could go about doing this, in theory, and that is by using a capture card. Basically, if you don't know what a capture card is, it's a little something that hooks up to your HDMI cable, which carries your video signal, and then sends the video signal back to whatever device you want that's recording it, pretty much. It's pretty helpful. I'm 99% sure Roblox does not have HDCP, which is basically a little something to protect things like films and stuff 
from being recorded pretty much. It encrypts the video signal. So basically no device that's legal will help you decrypt it. So it's uncapturable pretty much. I already said this in the Fortnite games video I made a little while back, but I'm gonna say it again. I just really think this was a very, very stupid decision by Roblox. And I think it's an absolute miracle that there is a fix for this. Definitely. I don't know how this works. I don't know why this works, but it works. I think Roblox is really just shooting themselves in the foot with this one, personally, because obviously if you're a creator here on YouTube or wherever else, like you upload videos to the internet about Roblox and stuff, you're probably going to want some footage of it. And OBS is pretty helpful for doing that. But if OBS is disabled, Roblox can't really be broadcasted very much, which overall hurts Roblox as a brand because that's less publicity and everything. Can you imagine what would happen if like all these games like Minecraft and Roblox didn't have any YouTubers or other internet celebrities and everything, famous people playing them and making content about them? It wouldn't be very good. But yeah, hopefully Roblox fixes this. I'm not really counting on that to be honest. They're probably just going to ignore it, like they've ignored many issues on their platform. Because at the end of the day, I don't really think this is going to be a big problem for their stock price, pretty much. This is a method that, in theory, should work. But yeah, hopefully this did help you. I know this forum post definitely helped me a ton. Definitely. Huge shout out to the original poster. I'm going to link it down in the description for everyone to go check out and everything. That's all I've really got to say. See you later.